Hey, hey, party people. Here's a tutorial on how I made cloth masks. And I'm not a doctor or a nurse, but I am a product development geek. And I designed this after some research and testing on myself and my husband. After reading the CDC website, watching videos made by medical professionals on how to wear a mask, things like that. And if you don't care about why I designed my mask like this, feel free to fast forward. I'll post a timestamp here. First, the size. Doctors say that the mask should cover as much of your nose as possible and cover your chin. Additionally, I've heard some nurses wearing cloth masks over their N95 masks to be able to wear them longer. So this size almost entirely covers an N95 mask. We live in California and my husband bought us these N95 masks when the fires were getting really close to us. And I have an open package and Therefore, we cannot donate them. That's why I have one. Next, the ties. I have been hearing here and there that people can't find elastics anymore. And I also read that medical professionals prefer ties because their ears are getting tired and flop forward. I tried using hair elastics, but my ears didn't like them. They're so strong, the mask literally popped right off my face. <laughs> I'll show you an easy way to make ties. You don't need to turn them out inside out or anything like that. Next, the gathers. Multiple reasons again. When you gather up the sides, you can get a really nice snug fit and this can fit different face shapes and sizes. Sometimes the pleated mask leave gaps on the sides and I found that this is the easiest way to sew these masks. You're literally sewing a bunch of straight lines for the whole thing. And I know people are making those fitted ones with the curved seams, but I find this one to be the most universal and I'm trying to make this the easiest to assemble mask in terms of techniques and materials and minimal pattern making. This mask has an inside patch pocket. It's sized to fit a PM 2.5 filter, but you can also put tissues or paper towels or hankies in there. I call this the cough and moisture absorber. If you cough through this patch, you can barely feel the air through all the layers. My husband and I tested this on each other. It's positioned to keep these extra layers right over your nostrils and mouth. And yes, you can breathe through it. My husband walked on a treadmill for about 20 minutes uphill wearing a mask prototype with all the layers. Next, the materials. Use a thin, tightly woven fabric like poplin, like a cotton shirting. Do not use flimsy, like open weave, stretchy t-shirt, like really stretchy t-shirt stuff and use a natural fabric you can throw in the wash like cotton. The mask is two layers with a layer of non-woven interfacing inside. The pocket is also fused with the non-woven interfacing. The ties are made of similar fabric, but you know, you can use something ready-made like ribbons or shoelaces. Listen, you ain't going nowhere. Take those laces out of some shoes you don't wear a lot and just wash them. Last, the nose pinch which really closes up the mask as medically recommended and is especially important to glasses wearers. If you don't close the gaps around your nose, your breath goes up and fogs up your glasses. I used a tin tie, those wired bands used to close up bags of coffee beans. Like I literally cut this out of a bag of coffee beans. You can also use craft pipe cleaners or even a paper clip, but the paper clip is my least favorite. The others are a little softer on the nose. People are using a lot of different things for the nose pinch or don't have one at all, but I'm trying to use things that are fairly easy to get for the average person, okay? Also, don't forget to pull these out and sanitize when you wash the mask. You just keep reusing the wire until it gives out. All right, let's make one of these bad boys. First, as a teacher, I always suggest people take their own notes. However, for this, I created instructions as a free download in my online shop. So watch this video, then go to shop.zoehong.com and download the free instructions and a diagram. I'll post the link in the description box. 
I'm going to have a list of all the things that you need and the measurements in the description box. But briefly, you're going to need two pieces of thinly wove, thin, tightly woven cotton, size of the mask, and one piece for the pocket. And you're going to need two pieces of fusible, one for the mask, one for the pocket. You're going to need two long ties, and you're going to need a bendable metal wire like a tin tie or a craft pipe cleaner. So step one, wash and iron to pre-shrink your fabrics and cut fabrics to the measurements. Step two, iron on fusible interfacings to cotton matching up sizes. Step three, make a patch pocket. This pocket will be sewn inside the mask. And so you're gonna take your small piece of cotton with interfacing fused onto it. You're gonna iron down half an inch on two of the short sides and one long side and you're going to iron down one wide, one and a half inch wide piece on the long side. The finished measurements of the pocket, once everything has been folded and ironed, should be four by five and a half inches. Metric measurements will be in the instructions and in the description box. Now, you're going to top stitch down that big one and a half inch top flap of the pocket. And you want to put that row of top stitching an inch and a quarter from the folded edge so that it secures that top flap. And then you're going to pin your pocket onto the big piece of fused cotton. That big piece of fused cotton is going to be the back of the mask, the layer closest to your face. You wanna place your pocket an inch and a quarter from the top edge and center it widthwise on the mask, okay? So pin it securely and you're going to stitch it down. Always back tack every seam you do on this mask to secure all the edges and corners, etc. And my tip is to, when you lift the foot to turn the corner for the pocket, make sure that your needle is down and in your fabric to secure your place. So you're not like flopping around trying to find your, your place again. Step four, sew the mask. Pin your two pieces, the big pieces of cotton, right sides together. The pocket you just sewed should be on the inside. You want to sew just on the two short sides, three eighths of a seam allowance, and then you're going to turn it inside out, iron the seam opens, nice clean, open, and then close the seam and then press it so you have a nice sharp edge where the seam is. Fold and iron down half an inch down all along the bottom and top edges. And in retrospect, this probably would have been easier while it was inside out, but you figure out what works best for you. Inside out, right side out. You're gonna make the channels for the ties. This is like basically drawstring, right? Like sweatpants. So you need a channel for you to run your tie through. So with your mask, you're going to top stitch along the short sides, three quarters of an inch from the edge and make sure you back tack top and bottom to be secure. And then you're going to close the bottom of the mask, okay? Because right now the top and bottoms are open you're gonna close the bottom of the mask, top stitching a quarter inch from the edge, okay? But channel to channel. Do not stitch over the channels or you'll close up the holes for you to run your ties through. Step five is to make a channel for the nose wire. So first you're gonna measure whatever you're using for the nose pinch. I used a tin tie, it's a quarter of an inch wide. 
So I'm going to create an approximately three-eighths of an inch wide space at the top, like a channel that's three-eighths of an inch wide. First, I'm going to close the top of the mask. So I'm top stitching the mask layers together, sewing about five-eighths of an inch from the top edge of the mask, from that folded edge. And again, I'm going to avoid sewing over the tie channels on the sides. And then I'm going to top stitch a six inch line above that line. So I'm creating a three, a three eighths inch space to insert the tin tie. And you're not gonna stitch it all the way across channel to channel because then you don't, you don't, you don't, you're not gonna be able to insert your tin tie. You're gonna just sew like five, six inches in the middle, leaving a little gap on either side. Next, you're gonna make the ties if you need to, okay, unless you're using like ribbon or shoelaces or something. So you wanna take the, the strips of fabric and fold the, and iron the strips lengthwise in half. And then you're gonna open and fold the outer edges into the center and then iron it closed. So now the strip should be four layers, you know, about half an inch wide, you know, one fourth of the original width of the fabric. I know it takes a little long time, but this is really the easiest way to sew it. If you have a binder for your machine, awesome, go ahead and use that. When I cut these ties, I cut them on the cross grain to save fabric. For this purpose, they do not need to be cut on the bias. Once your tie is folded and ironed, top stitch to close the open side about an eighth of an inch from the edge. And then you're going to thread the ties through the channels. You know, you can clip a safety pin to one end to help you run the ties through the channels and then knot the ends. And that's it. Couple of notes, if you wanna make a lot of these masks, it would be faster if you made an actual pattern for the pieces out of like oak tag, cardstock, some some stiff fab, uh, paper, so you could trace out the pieces instead of measuring each rectangle every time. And you know, now that you have seen me make one, what I've been doing is doing all my cutting at once, all my ironing at once, and then all my sewing at once. It makes things go faster. If you're working with someone, you can kind of set up an assembly line. And last note, these measurements, I mean, you see they fit on me and my husband. We have like, you know, medium large adult heads. So Definitely you're gonna want to make these smaller for children and maybe a little bit bigger if you're working with someone with a very large head. And yeah, I'm using contrasting colors so that the tutorial is easier to follow, but of course, feel free to create a color combo that suits your personal style. As you saw before, I made an all black one for myself. <laughs> uh, and remember, cloth masks are no replacement for N95 and similar medical masks. But I did try to make this the most helpful mask possible that is still relatively easy to make. Please share this video with anyone you know interested in making masks for themselves or for donation. Don't forget to go to shop.zoehong.com to get your free instructions written out and a diagram. Drop your questions in the comment section below. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Click the description box for more information and I'll see you in the next video.